Today we're going to look at circle geometry. The learning goal for today is that we're going to be looking at applying four theorems of circle geometry to determine unknown angles. So first, we need to understand some definitions. So circle definitions, different parts of the circle, some of them we already know, um, will be reviewed and some of them might be new to you. So if I've got a, a line in a circle that joins two sides of the circle together, that is called a chord. A special chord is one that goes through the centre of the circle. The diameter is a special chord and it goes through the centre of the circle. A radius goes from the centre of the circle to any point on the outside of the circle. And the centre of the circle is at a point inside the circle that is equally distant from any point on the edge of the circle. It means that every radius will be the same, exactly the same length. We also have um, arcs and sectors here. So an arc is any uh, line that follows and traces around part of the circle. Any line that passes around part of the circle. A major arc goes over half of the circle and a minor arc goes, over, uh, goes less than half the circle. If it goes exactly halfway over the circle, then it's going to be a semicircle arc. There, uh, if we draw a radius out to each side of the arc, so to one side of the arc and the other side of the arc, then we divide the circle into a sector. So the sectors are the point in, inside um, that arc um, and joined with those two radii. So for a, an, a sector that's less than half the circle, it's a minor sector. And for a sector that's greater than half the circle, it's a major sector. If we have a chord that cuts a circle into two parts, then we have, uh, we've split it into segments. A minor segment is less than half the circle and a major segment is greater than half the circle. We have another word that we need to understand definition of, um, and that is this word subtended. So the word subtended talks about the relationship between an angle inside the circle from at the radius and the a point on the circle or an arc on the circle a or a chord that's made inside the circle so it's all about the relationship so for this example down in the bottom left hand corner it says angle aob that's this angle here angle aob is subtended at the center by the minor arc ab so by this arc here the arc ab so that means that we've, we're discussing the relationship between the angle. The angle here relates to the arc at the outside of the circle. If we had a chord, we'd be doing the same thing, but it would just be drawn straight across here. So we'd say the angle AOB is subtended at the center by the minor chord AB, okay? If we were looking at, at a chord there rather than an arc. So the definition that's written here talks about that relationship. If an angle is subtended by an arc or chord, the arms of the angle meet the endpoints of the arc or chord. So it's the relationship between the arc or chord and the angle that makes um, that the, the two radii come out to meet it. So now we understand those definitions, let's look at the first two theorems. The first theorem is that the angle at the centre of a circle is twice the angle at a point on the circle subtended by the same arc. So if we have the center of the circle here and a point on the circle, they are subtended by the same arc, this arc here, AB. We can see that both of the arms of those two angles meet the chord, A, meet the arc, sorry, AB. And there's a relationship between those two angles. If we've got one at the center and one at the edge of the circle, the one at the edge of the circle is half that of the one at the center of the circle. Or we can say the one at the center of the circle is twice that of the one at the edge of the circle. But that's the relationship between those two angles. We can draw a uh, coded reason when we're going through our proofs. And it's the coded reason for using this theorem. We can draw a circle with its center, two uh, angles coming out for those chords and then drawing those angles in. Our second theorem is a special case of theorem one. It's the case where we have a semicircle. 
So that means we've got the, the diameter going all the way across and through the centre of the circle. Now the angle that's at the centre is going to be 180 degrees. And the arc you can see here is AB. And it's subtended uh, by our angle at the centre of the circle and also on the edge of the circle. And because we've got that angle of 180 degrees at the centre of the circle, that means the angle on the edge of the circle is going to be half of that, 90 degrees. So it means angle ACB in this case is going to be 90 degrees. We can draw that um, as a coded reason using a circle, line through the centre, showing our triangle and putting a right angle there. Okay, a little bit neater than what I've done there, obviously. Let's have a look at some examples now. So firstly, we're going to look at finding the value of a pronumeral in, the, um, in these circles. So the first circle that we have here, we've got two angles, one subtended, uh, both subtended by the same arc here, BC, both subtended by the arc BC here, and that uh, the angle relationship that we have is that we've got um, angle BOC that's at the centre and angle BAC that's at the edge. So we know that uh, 2 times A is going to be equal to 126. Okay, 2 times A is going to be 126 and we need to give a coded reason for that. We can't just state something and make an assertion without having some evidence to back it up. So the evidence that we have is that we've got theorem 1 here, okay, like this, or if you prefer you can write circle theorem 1. If you would prefer, okay. So now we know, or we've, we've stated a fact, we've given evidence, we can now solve our equation, and we get that A is equal to 63. So that angle here, angle B, A, C, is going to be 63 degrees. Let's have a look at this next circle. Now we've got our special case of the other theorem. So we know that angle A, B, C, is going to be 90 degrees. And we know that because of theorem 2. So we can draw our um, coded reason here, or we can write circle theorem 2 if we want um, as, our, as our reason. This also means that now, because we know that there are 180 degrees in a circle, A plus 70 plus 90 will equal 180. We need a coded reason for that as well. And that coded reason is that there are 180 degrees in a triangle, in the interior angles of a triangle. So if we work this one out, we get that A is going to be equal to 20 here, if we subtract 160 from both sides. Looking at our final question here, this one's a little bit more challenging, a few more steps to do. So uh, we know that angle here, if we have a look at our the, this triangle in here, AOB, triangle AOB, we've got AO and BO are radii of the circle, so they're the same length. So the triangle that we have there is an isosceles triangle. So that means that angle AOB is going to be equal to, sorry, not angle AOB, my mistake, triangle OAB, is going to be equal to 25 degrees. And that's because we've got an isosceles triangle and the base angles of an isosceles triangle are the same. We can now then work out that um, angle A, uh, sorry, angle OAB, not angle OAB, angle AOB is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus two lots of the 25. That's because there are 180 degrees in a triangle. There. So that means angle AOB is going to be 130 degrees. So now we've got our relationship that we can we can work at work with for circle theorem one. So two times A is going to be 130. And the reason for that is because we've got our angle here subtended by the same arc at the centre. 
So we've got our our um, or our chord rather, and our and our and our arc here, angle A, a uh, arc AB. They are subtended. Um, the two angles, an angle at the edge of the circle here, angle A, and an angle at the centre of the circle, angle AOB, they're subtended by the same arc and the same chord. So it means we can use our uh, circle theorem 1. So that means that A must equal 65 for this case, as we divide both sides by 2 there. Now on to uh, theorems 3 and 4, circle theorems 3 and 4. The Theorem 3 we have here, the angles at the circumference of a circle subtended by the same arc are equal. So here's our arc, arc AB, and we've got two angles on the, um, on the circumference of the circle. So we've got angle, this angle here and this angle here, and they are subtended by the same arc. So this arc here, AB, both of their endpoints are at the same arc. And those two angles are equal. So that's the theorem three. Theorem four is that the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. So a cyclic quadrilateral is a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure, that has each of its four vertices, each of its four corners, on the edge of a circle. And these the opposite angles are supplementary, that means they sum to 180 degrees. So here for this case, A plus C is 180, because they're opposite, A plus C is 180, and B plus D is also 180. Some examples now. Let's have a look at the following, the values of the pronumerals in the following circles. First circle we have here A, we've got uh, two angles here, and they are subtended by the same arc here. They're angles on the edge of the circle subtended by the same arc here. So that means that A is equal to 30, and we need to give a coded reason. The coded reason we can give is here. These angles are subtended by the same arc. You could also write circle theorem 3 if you felt so inclined. For B, for um, our example 2, part B here, we've got a cyclic quadrilateral. All of the corners of the, all of the vertices of the quadrilateral are on the edges of the circle. So that means opposite angles are going to add to 180 degrees. So that means A plus 125 equals 180, and that's because we've got a cyclic quadrilateral here, cyclic quadrilateral, uh, and so that means that A is going to be equal to 55, and for our angle B, B plus, oh, I've got this completely wrong, this is B at the top here, because B is opposite to the 125 here, so A plus 128 equals 180, and they are opposite to each other. So here we give our coded reason again. The reason for our assertion or our statement here is that we've got a cyclic quadrilateral, so that means A is going to be equal to 52 for this particular answer. So our learning goal, just to recall our learning goal, recap our learning goal for today, was that we were going to look at four uh, theorems of circle geometry that we can use to solve these angle problems.